guys don't know. Right. My name is Gary. Um, Please, don't Okay. My name is Gary Dina Gamba. I am the project developer for the Marcus, the Garvey Town project. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> right. the, the project was the idea of a workshop in Barbados in 2002. Um, and I was tasked to cheer the group that was supposed to make it a reality. Um, but as happens with lots of conferences, people go and they do a lot of talking and then after the conference you can't find it. Um, I have this weird quirk. When, when I say I'm going to do something, I follow it through, come tick thick or thin, right? So, I was given eight other people to help me with sorting it out. When I got back to the UK, I emailed all of them um, and they didn't respond. Uh, I was given a two year period to get certain things sorted out uh, because the follow up concert was gonna be two years later. So, I, got a bunch of people I'd worked with at um, a school I was the director of in London for the Nubian African Community Foundation School. I got a bunch of people from the Nubian African Community Foundation School and I said, Look, give me a hand with me. And we started out. Um, we sort of like did the research, we um, put together a plan, and we then uh, set out to acquire the land. Right? We were having some trouble from the UK, so me and one other brother, Nick Pedro, came down and um, we spent the next six months um, trying to get a piece of land that was appropriate for the project. We managed that. Um, we got this one. Um, we Part of the research we did was into land laws and how they work and how it could be favourable for us and so on. So we got this piece of land and we got it on an agreement with a family, right? Um, then it turned out that uh, the family had, members of the family had sold two pieces of the land um, over time. So those other two groups came in. So there are three families that own the land originally. Yeah? And they've given the land over to us for 297 years. Yeah? Um, it is not a normal lease. Uh, and if you get involved in the project, you get a right to use the land for that period of time. At the end of that period of time, by the laws and traditions of Ghana, you have settled it. Yes? So there is no more renewing anything after that period of time. Yeah? Right? Um, so, we set out and we sought planning permission uh, we got planning permission, we zoned the place, uh, areas where there will be commercial activity, uh, areas for residential, for education, for farming, and so on. Um, what we came up with was a community, yes, and the community, the idea of the community was twofold. One, Whenever we return to live in Africa, we have a problem. Everything in Africa happens, families are involved. Yeah? Right? And when we come back, we come back as individuals. Yeah? We have no structure around us, so that if you make a simple mistake, um, you do the wrong thing. Somebody might say to you, you have to slaughter a sheep. Yeah? Um, you don't 
understand what's going on, you think <laughs> they're taking liberties. You would be, right? So the task was to create the situation where we could return and live in harmony with the people, learn the customs and traditions, yeah, and be in a position where if something goes wrong, we have a structure around us, right? So the whole of this Garvey Town is designed with that in mind. Yeah? So if you move here, yeah, um, and you meet somebody a Ghanaian, you're not married, you decide you want to marry a Ghanaian, you meet a Ghanaian. There are traditional ways that this is done. Yeah? Right? And there would be people here to help you to do that. Yeah? And not be people take advantage of you and at the same time not really get yourself in trouble because you've done the wrong. Yeah? So the entire structure is built as a family to support the diaspora and African who returns. Yeah? Um, if we're gonna have a family, there's got to be some rules. Yeah? Right. Um, we have one rule that can't be changed, and then all the other rules. When a majority, there's gonna be 300 families here, yeah? When a large enough group of us get together, then we will revise what six people did, yes, and decide what we want to keep and what we want to discard and what we want to add, if that's the case. Yeah? Right? Uh, apart from one rule, there are no hard and fast rules. Yeah? Okay? Right? Now, we say, we will not allow, okay, any person that has been convicted of a pedophilia, pedophilia. Yeah, that's right. here because I this say. is for a family yeah right so whenever anybody joins we ask them to uh, fill out the form right and we have contacts in the British police force and through them contacts with the United States and the local Caribbean islands. Not all, yeah? And what we do is we go searching if the person's got any conviction against children. Yeah? Oh, I see. Um, I'm being honest with you. Because of my experiences outside of Africa, one of the things I know, lots of us end up with convictions for all kinds of things, and that's the system, yeah? But I remember one time we caught one of these people and six black guys kicking a white guy and some white police officers came back and said, oh, we'll come back when you're free. Right? And after we think the white police officer said to him, uh, we all have children, right? So I think that's the one thing that <laughs> we share with them. Yeah, you with me, right? So I, aside from that, I would say to you, the project is designed so that the families who are going to live here will direct our goals. Uh, right. Uh, businesses that are set up inside the project. Yeah? Uh, will not buy land from the project. Wherever the business is sited, the business will pay 16% of its profits to Garvey. Yes? Uh, the profits that the businesses pay to Garvey Town is used for the upkeep of Garvey. Yes? Um, there is a small group of us who sold what we had to get. Yes? And we get 
12% of all that Garvey Town is. Yeah? The family that we get the land from. Yeah? To make this thing work, we have to uh, give them money with you every year. Yes? Is that 12% included with the 16 or 12? If the business business pays 16% to government, yeah? all the different businesses will pay 16% to 3% to government. That pool of money yes, will be in the Garvey town. Yeah? Right. The group of us who started the project and used our money to do it. Um, we will get 12% of that 16. Are you with me? No, 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 no. Not 4%. 12% of. Look, if it's. The businesses, all of them gave us 100. Yeah? Right. So 12 cities would come to us. And the other 80. Um, uh, no, 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 no. 88. 88. You are the 88 cities. 16 cities would go to the families who the land came from. And the rest of it would be for the expansion of Garvey. Because the remit that I was making was to make this. Ghana would be the original, but it would spread out throughout every African country. Right? So um, that money would be so that nobody had to put their hand in their pocket and take it from their family. So, so it would help us to establish other Garvey Town projects in other parts of Africa. Yeah? So that's what it's all about yeah? right um the, there's a layout here okay um and right what we've got is three spaces for 300 family owners yes uh we're going to build um all around the, there is one plot right around the outside of the site we're going to build these apartment blocks all the way around. Yeah. Um, it's one of the companies that's going to be part of Garvey Town that will do that work. And that will generate funds. So some of them will be sold, some of them will be rented, some of them will be like, uh, let's call it time share. Yeah? So for people who just want to come and visit. Yeah? Um, and that money will also go into the half time. Yeah. Right? So um you would generate the funds so that the project can complete its development. Um so that's what it is. Um right. I said right, you fill out the form, yes. Uh, the Metropolitan Police charges us £50 to do the check on people. So we pass that on. <laughs> yeah. Okay? Because they're going to charge me £50, so I'm going to charge you £50. Yeah? Okay? Right? Um, so we get the police check. Aside from that, um, we Oh, we have to have with a form two photos. Okay. Okay. And you know just identify ID to make sure. Um and then aside from that, once you've joined, you're a member. Yes? You don't stop being a member. Right? right? Once you join. Yeah? Right? Um, you're a member. Um, there are no members views that are there. If you acquire a plot. Yeah. There is in Ghana under the laws here. There is a small rent, 
yeah. Like you have to pay. At the time when we came uh, in pounds, it was seven pounds a year. Yeah. Uh, that time, that would have been about twelve dollars. Yeah. At the exchange rate then. Um, now it would be around about. I think it's just about. About be about ten dollars. Yeah. Um. Right. So you join, you select a plot, yeah. And sorry, yeah. You join, you select a plot, and you have five years to develop the plot. Right. If you haven't developed the plot in five years, if you haven't started work at all then uh, we will try and find a family that is willing to develop the plot. Yeah? Um, if you've started work, then we will pressure you <laughs> to, um, you heard me, continue work and finish work. Right. Um, right. Uh, I'm going to shock all of you now. The first nine people because one person's gone already the first nine people will get a plot for the grand total of 150 dollars right um it is right let me explain why we want for years i've been here 15 years and the big problem i've got is there's no there's nobody on the site and african people i'm talking about us from over there right we look and we say, yeah, it's a nice idea, blah, 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 but there ain't nobody there, yeah? And because there's nobody there, I don't want to be the first one, yeah? So we've had hundreds of people that have come, yeah? I've built houses for some of them in Accra and in other regions of Ghana, yeah? But they don't want to move onto what's seen as a virgin site yeah nobody wants to be the first one right because of the nature of what the project is supposed to be um the only way that i could get around this would be to move Ghanaian families into those 300 plots you would be and then you come and you see people and then but if i did that the nature of what the project is supposed to be would be lost because once I open it to the Ghanaian market, I can't close it to the Ghanaian market. Yeah? So I would end up with the majority of the plots mm -hmm. being sold to Ghanaians and it would not be the community we need. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. So we decide we made a decision last year that we were going to sell ten plots. Yeah, at a hundred pounds each. Yeah, to get ten families starting to work on the site. Yeah, and then once they've started, we know other people will come. Yeah, but unfortunately, nobody wants to be the first one. When we came, we thought we were gonna have enough money, so we started to build three houses up the top. Yeah, and you would if the bush wasn't so bad, I'll take you and show you them, yeah? Right? We started to build three houses. One of them we put the roof on. Um, another one we have built up, we just started to frame it up for the roofing. Another one we just did the foundations and then the stem wall and then one wall and then we stopped. We ran out of money, yeah? Most of our money went into uh, a lot of engineering things that I had to do on the land to make sure that we didn't have drainage and flooding problems later on, yeah? So our money got eaten up with all of them, yeah? So, you would know, we had no other source. So, after a time, because people weren't coming, I had to do something. So the school, which is part of what we're supposed to do, became very important. So, I've spent the last eight years just keeping the school going, yeah? Um, it's not the school that we want. Um, we've got the design for a building and everything. Um, 
for what we want, but at the moment, we don't have the money. Yeah, the money will come from people and businesses moving on to the side. Yeah. So, that's basically what it is. If you want to ask any questions, feel free. After the nine, after the nine, it will be the price of land as valued in this area. At present, that is let's see, uh, it's about a thousand eight hundred dollars, right? And then after that, you do your paperwork and everything. It's the layout for the site, for the entire site, right. The size of the plots, different size? There are three, right. with the exception of six plots, there are three plots, three sizes of plots. There is 70 by 100, which is the standard plot size in Ghana. 7,000. Right. Yeah. Then there is 100 by 100, and then there is 125 by 100. Yeah. Um, the hundred dollars, hundred and fifty dollars, is based on the seventy by a hundred standard plot. Yeah. Um, excuse me. We would adjust it slightly. Um, How far is this from Accra? How far is this from Accra? Uh, from the edge of Accra, we are about. Uh, Toll booths in the, uh, it's the start of Accra now, yeah? Right. We're 35 minutes on the toll booth. No yeah. So, like I asked you, how far are we from where we, we're at the meeting? Uh -huh. Center of downtown. Right. Yeah. Um, to, from here to where you have the meeting is. About an hour, uh, hour without traffic. But where you have the meeting, there is a particular problem because you come across Spintex road traffic and the tail off from it. Hour and a half, <laughs> two hours. Hour, so an hour, hour and a half, two hours. Yeah. Where you had the meeting is close to the airport. Yeah. It's two hours from here to the airport. Like normally, if I'm taking somebody, I leave two hours to the time and I go to the airport. If I'm going to catch a flight, I leave two hours to the time I know I need to check in and then I go, yeah, it's two hours. So, what about the cost of building? Uh, the, the cost of building. Um, right. When, right, there is planning permission for all the houses, okay? Um, and there's outline planning permission for the business friends. Right, now, with the houses, if you get a plot and you say, right, the particular bungalow that we originally based the, the cost on um, isn't suitable for you, you then sit down and we work out with an architect yeah, a drawing that's to your satisfaction. Uh, you then have the architectural cost, yeah, which you don't have, you just stick to all about below. And then when the architect has finished his work, we need to take it to the planning authority and pay the extra. Yeah? Because when they gave planning permission, it was based on like a three bedroom, a four bedroom, a six bedroom. Yeah? What's the cost of that basement? It changes quite regularly, but let me say it is about 250 cities a week. Planning for me. About 250 cities a week. So you can kitchen or just get But they call a room anything that's not a kitchen or a bathroom. Okay. It's classed as a room. 
That's how much you pay, pay the planning commission. Yeah, that's, that money's not coming to us. That's going to the planning authority. No, well, I was just trying to make sure. We've paid them. We've yeah, paid them for a three bedroom. We've paid them um, at the time. Yeah. Uh, it was 50 cities a week at the time. Yeah. And I told you, 14 years ago. Can you speak up just a little bit? So it's loud. Oh, sorry. Yeah. We, when we did this, it was like 14 and a half years ago. Uh, it was 50 cities a room then. Yeah? The last time I went there, it was 250 a room. Yeah? Okay. Right. Um, that's so, not to be, uh, huh? That's for the that's planning commission. Planning yeah. commission. Right. Mm. The, your building will be <laughs> the, the cost of your building will depend on you deciding what you want inside. Yes. And the size of the building, what type of roof you want, and so on. Yeah, what types of materials you want the building built out of. And then what's called a quantity survey will be done for you. Yeah? Um, to let you know what it would cost to do what you're asking. Yeah, question. We have a model in mind, right? What is the model built cost? Roughly just a rough estimate. It was about 40. Roughly 25,000 for a three bedroom. 25,000 pounds for a three bedroom house. Pounds. How much is that? That's, that's roughly, you times it by 1.5. For American dollars? Yeah, roughly. So, so, so 25 is your basic deal without all of your, your particulars that you choose for yourself. Yeah. So rough about, roughly about 40. 25,000 pounds. Okay, all right. Okay. 1.5. So. Right, no, right, sorry. What happened is all of these costs are in my head because I was working from the UK. Right. Right? So I got all the costs in UK currency. Yeah, what I've got in my head, it's all in UK currency. I understand, so you're talking, you're talking names you don't understand, so people say, what is that? Right, so, right, in US dollars, if you times it by 1.5, that's about a, that's about a dollar. Okay, yeah. Then you get American dollars. American dollars. Yeah. You have to do a currency convert of 25,000 yeah. 25, pounds. Yeah. Times 1.5. 1.5. It's probably about $1,000. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Somewhere that. But it'll be less than that because the exchange rate is about 1.35. Not 1.5. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I'm um, uh -huh. So, any other? Okay, so uh, you mentioned earlier that it took, it takes five years to get to the uh, final finished uh, phase of development no, um, no, 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 no. I mean see that, that, that's a max that, that's a max no, no, no. what are we saying yeah. is, right everybody that yeah. um, gets a plot here you get for housing yeah you get five years we expect you to build a shelter in five years in five years right right now a shelter means that somebody can live inside okay yeah Okay? Yeah. Right? It's livable. Right. Right? It might not be complete. Yeah? I've been here three years. It's not complete, but I can stay inside. Right. So yeah. what, what year are you expected to have the foundation set by? Uh, we haven't done it like that. Okay. We haven't done it like that. What mm. we've said is we're giving everybody five years, yeah, to have something livable. Yeah? Um, so some people, yeah, um, having something livable, they'll come and they'll do three rooms and a bathroom and toilet and they say, that's good. For them, that's all right. Another person might come and they want to build some massive thing. I'm working on a house for somebody. I've been on it 11 years now. The thing, wow. you would Wow. Nine bedrooms and 
five living rooms and one of the five living rooms is so big you could stick my house in it yeah right and then he spent all these years he can't live there he's still stuck in Britain yeah um, <laughs> so that's what we don't want to happen yeah so we're saying it must be livable after five years <laughs> you know because, you know I mean, having an half-finished building doesn't attract people. Yeah, it's just it's an empty development. Yeah. yeah, I understand. So as far as the infrastructure is concerned, and being that the funds are lacking, mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, it would basically, what we see is how it will be until there will be a mass load of people coming in to be able to establish that infrastructure goes. Uh, utility running across or I'm not sure how you do plumbing or not. Right, all right. Uh, let me give you an example. There is water. Um, I When we first came here, yeah, I piped all 15 colder sands. All 15 colder sands. The, the, the houses are grouped into groups of 20. Each one a colder sand, because one way in, one way out. It's a colder sand, yeah? Right, so I piped all 20 cold sacks when we came. Right, since then they've moved where we got the water from, so I've cut it off. But it doesn't take much to put the water back. Um, the electricity is going to be a little bit more difficult. Um, the electricity is going to be a bit more difficult because uh, ideally, we wanted the cables to be underground, right? When the ECG come, they will only do it over, right? Um, so that's gonna be a little bit more difficult. So what I'm gonna do is try and get people into a particular area and then we can run to there, you would be underground, and then we get the ECG to connect that and then we go further and get them to connect that like that, yeah? So we, because unfortunately, the moment that they connect to it, it becomes their property. Yeah. So we want a setup. They would never build what we want. Yeah. But once we build it, it will become theirs. So if we don't do it properly in the first place, then you will have uh, transformers that are constantly going off and stuff. Yeah because they overload them, yeah? So, all of that. So, the electrics, we will do ourselves step by step. Yeah? The water, uh, we will do ourselves because uh, we need uh, backup tanks, yeah? So, like in the design, we've got five backup tanks, yeah? That will keep the water pressure up because the moment that all of these estate developers that are around there, work starts here, all of them will start. And then what will happen is the water pressure will drop. And they will make no provision to keep the water pressure up. So we have to make our own provision. So that like if the water goes off, the water pressure drops, we will still have water for a week Till the water pressure comes back up yeah so like all of that we've planned yeah um, and things. so like the money that we're gonna raise when people start to buy the plot is going to go into the development of the site um, that's what it's about that's so if I bought a plot mm -hmm. we stand right here you said right we're right here huh we're right here. Yeah. We're right here. Where, if I wanted to buy a plot, where would uh, would it be? In this area, that area? You know, start with this. Okay. Like this plot, this plot, and this plot already have buildings on. Okay. Alright. Um. So, like, what we wanted to do is start with this whole so, yeah. so, if I buy a plot, how far? Uh, about. 300 meters. So if I buy a plot, then you're going to make way for a road and yes. construction and going to get in there. Right. There's a road that came in and went up 
yeah, tour these out. Yeah. And we were driving backward and forward. Over the years, like I said, it, it's overgrown because um, it became too expensive for me to keep it up. I remember I told you the people who were supposed to be giving me a hand to do this didn't materialize. So I used people who I knew. So they donated their time and their effort for a while. And then after a while, all but three of them have dropped off. Yeah? So, in effect, I have to find the finances to keep the place going till the place is self-sustaining. And then I can wash my hands. <laughs> I retire. <laughs> One person, one plot. Um, it's the it's the thing about settlement. Yeah, in a village, you would only be allowed one dwelling. Yeah, if you were settling somewhere. Where's the closest body of water? Where's the closest body of water? What do you mean? The ocean. Uh, the ocean. <laughs> Right. Beach, the closest beach is Fetid. Yeah. White Sands. No. Yeah, White Sands. I, I, I show, uh, uh, yeah, that's the closest. White Sands. White Sands. White Sands is the closest. White Sands is about 12 kilometers. About ooh, eight miles. Huh? Yeah, that's the Atlantic. So, yeah, yeah um, uh, There are streams through the site. Um, there are no uh, rivers, large rivers close. Uh, the largest one is. Hey, Mr. George. Ainsu. Ainsu. Yeah. Um, which is about 14. So about six, seven kilometers. It's after, you know the last roundabout you passed? Right? It's halfway between there and there. That's a large river that you can swim in or catch fish in on the highland. So you've drilled into the water source? No. Uh, right. Um, up the road here is a reservoir. Yeah, at a place called Konya. It is a reservoir and it supplies water to uh, this part of the central region and part of Accra. Um, and the main pipe for that passes on the other side of the road between the road and that light pole that you see. There. Yeah, 18 inch water main, high pressure. So that's where we get our water from. So when they turn off the water, yeah? Like a week later, all water goes off, right? And most of the time you have what's like a power shower on just the tap. But like I say, once enough people move around there, that pressure will drop as people start to tap off from it, yeah? Um, it will drop. So we've made plans for these water towers, five of them that will keep our water pressure the same. So would you consider creating a borehole? Uh, a borehole in this area is not all that good idea because it's salty. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of ground salt. I can imagine. Yeah. What's the quality of the water? The quality of the water? Yeah. Uh, it's good. Uh, I, right. I got to be fair, yeah. I know the manager there. Um, I worked with him in England when I was doing some volunteer work at Thames Water. He runs the place like he did when he was working at Thames Water. Right, so it's the same standard of water as Thames Water. The only time there's a problem is with the water is when someone breaks into the pipe. Um, and then. Hmm? Yes, it does, unfortunately. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Oh, thank you.
that's also part of the thing with building the towers because we can um, then filter some of the water to get out some of the chemicals that they use for <laughs> Uh, town for uh, like shopping or you know, grocery uh, stuff like that. Um, nearest for small items you can go to the villages and get, yeah. Um, so either way, two kilometers less than, than a mile and a half, right? But to get proper shopping, like what you're used to might be uh, a Liberia camp or um, the shopping mall, some things, the shopping mall, which is West Hill, which is about 12 kilometers from there. Uh, about, about six or so. Seven miles. Oh, oh, by the way, when this is finished, there'll be the equivalent of a shopping mall on the side. That's what I was just about to. That's my mind. Yeah, is when it, it when uh, it's finished, there'll be um, the equivalent of a shopping mall on the side. So if, if somebody wanted to, to propose a commercial use as opposed to starting a house first, could they? That, that's that's. Yeah, okay. That's part of the business um, yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, the, the idea is that we create enough employment yeah. for everyone. Everyone. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, um, since this is sort of a planned effort, uh, you want to and you want to employ the whole development. Is there a plan a business development plan to determine the nature of the land use for the businesses? Yes. There is sixteen acres set aside for businesses. Yeah. Um for commercial development. Yes. Are there are there some specific kinds of business that you target? Uh yeah. Um uh, we wanted to have two supermarkets. Mm -hmm. um, we wanted like cinema, okay, uh, uh, a couple of restaurants, recreational. Um, uh, oh, the recreational facilities yeah. uh, on every cul-de-sac. Yes. There's one. So we're planning to have one swimming pool, uh, some oh, tennis well. courts. Yes. Yeah, uh, you would be basketball courts. Sort football of. pitch and so on. Yes. Um, the the space is set aside for all of this. Right. Um, <laughs> what happened was originally we had made an arrangement with one of the um, phone companies that they would um, set up the tower. A tower. Um, on a particular part of the site that's mm. not going to be too close to any houses. Um, they'd set up a tower there so that Wi Fi was in range. We add um, things. Yeah. But um, I've seen how they arrange their things. So we've been talking about how we can possibly um, change from that arrangement because their services are not. It's not continuous. That, that's the, it's intermittent. Yeah. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm comparing how they are in Accra. When I go into Accra, to here. try to use their services, it is intermittent. Yeah. Uh, so if they're going to set up the same thing here, yeah, we're going to have to here. arrange something else. You would love it. If my grandchildren come here, um, they're not going to be happy. <laughs> hey, the services are too intermittent. There's, there's a give or take, man. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I would like to have something where consistency, the consistency is there, <laughs> so that when they come, they don't want to leave. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, there's certain things they're not gonna live without. So. <laughs> Hot water <laughs> and Wi-Fi. <laughs> um. I'm sorry if you already answered this, but uh, you made mention there's only one plot per person. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you mean lease them? If I bought a plot built uh, right. a house, could I lease it out? Uh, yes. Rent it out? Yes. Timeshare? Uh, uh, yes, you could. Yeah. But you could still only have that one. You but you can one. still only have the one. Uh, the <laughs> it's, it's based on the concept of how villages were done originally. When a space was set aside for housing in a village, they only allowed each person one house and then when you um think so because we're working from a traditional mad model yes we had to stick to certain things because otherwise we could fall foul of the law yeah because we're using tradition to guarantee what we're trying to do you have to stay in line when you purchase your plots. You can't buy a plot in a different location. You have to buy the sequence that you're building. No, 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 no. Oh, you don't? No. Um, what, what we are saying to people is, yeah, if you want to be certain of a good electricity supply, right, when you first come, yeah, right, then you have to be in this cold of Right, if you don't mind <laughs> roughing it for a while, you can go all the way in. Yeah, you understand me? But when you come, the first group of people that's here, they're going to have access to water and access to electricity. Yeah, but unless enough people come at one time, I can't guarantee to bring it more than the first hold of that at first. So, you with me. I can guarantee you you're there. If you go somewhere else, you might have to wait. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. You can you can go anywhere on the site. Yeah. But I will only guarantee you that you can get main supply at that point you would be and then you know might be a year later if enough people come at that point and so on yeah you would be i won't write a check that my body can't get i have a question we were talking about excuse me we were talking about electricity um do you use solar is it is it optional for you to have electricity or right. can you use um like solar right. or something? I would suggest, yeah, when I'm building my house, right? right? Oh, that's a medical center building, by the way. I'm living here. That's <laughs> it's going to yeah. be a medical center. That's, like doctor's that's surgery. That's the first building. hospital. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I'm living there at present. Right? <laughs> and it's the water authority. <laughs> <laughs> right? um, what, 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 what happened is there's going to be a medical center yeah. there. Uh -huh. Doctors, um, mm -hmm. I don't know if you know the British system. I don't know the uh, American system. Uh, the British system is you have what's called a GP, a general practice. Uh, yes, and same you go thing. to that person and they see you and they will send you to an hospital. You don't just pick up yourself and go to an hospital. Oh, okay. Unless you are seriously ill. Right. So yeah. That's where my wife is. That's, that's my next question is can we build something like a clinic if you already got a pill? Right? Um, and then we're going to have an hospital behind. Yeah, a real heart. Right? A real hospital. <laughs> right? So, you and me. Um, till we have enough people, I can't Do all get that. the organization who promised me a doctor. I can't get a doctor here, so I'm living in there. <laughs> right, right. Hmm? About the solar panels. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, so, right. Solar, what I would suggest to everybody is that you have solar and you are on the grid. The reason why is solar panels and so a solar electric system is good, but the batteries, yeah, 
batteries that they design are not designed for Africa. Yo. So they don't last. They die out quick. <laughs> die out quick. And then you start having problems certain times of the night. Your can you bring them in from somewhere else? Can you bring them in from another No, no, hold on. You, you're not hearing me. The batteries that they design, they're not made here. The batteries that they design you know. for solar power do not do well no, here. in <laughs> Africa. Why is that? Why is that? Uh, they're not made here. It's to do with the heat and the humidity. That's how people we haven't seen them, but for a car. I, I drove in England for years. I never had to change a battery in my car. Every two years here, you have to get a new battery. So it's totally impractical for that type of air. Yeah. yeah. Something happens to you. Who does this project follow? Who does it fall upon? Yeah. Right now. Something happens to you. Right now. Who carries the vision? Who carries the responsibility? Um, in London, there is Nefertari and Ruth over here with the baby. Yeah? Uh, Ruth, who's waving, wave again, please. Yeah. And a lady in London called Nefertari. Yeah? Right. Uh, they're the only two, yeah, that I can guarantee you will continue the vision. Other people are in the organization, but they're the only two I can carry. Tell you that if I don't wake up tomorrow morning, it's gonna get dependent done. on the two of them. Is that, is that somewhere like riding that everything carries over with their oversight of this project? <laughs> then we need to get to the school children. You don't want to do the school? I couldn't hear the response. Was there a council or something? I couldn't hear the response. Is there a council or something? At present, yes, we are under a council of elders which is in London. In London. Right? Um, but they are only a stopgap till we get enough elders here to be able to create a council of elders. Yeah? Right. Um, but the project runs yeah, no, on the energy of supplies. basically three people. Supplies, so. Ruth over there, yeah. myself, yeah. Nefertari. Yeah. I was just wondering. What, I was just wondering when. Um, this, this goes up now? Yeah, or should we just keep? Yeah. Okay. But I live alone in the U.S. by myself. Yeah. So could I have my plot and they have their plot, or we got them on the same plot? No, you don't. Have, hold on. A family. Um, the way that we've done it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you were living in a village, when your son got a certain age, mm -hmm. yeah, he would move out to your house. Okay. When your daughter got a certain age, <laughs> uh, hopefully. <laughs> you, you understand me? Yeah, because they're adults, but you can't say, "Oh, my little baby like this is gonna buy a plot." No, I, I <laughs> they, they have to be an adult. Yeah, they have to be an adult. Adult age sixteen? Huh? Is the adult age sixteen? Uh, no, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I have a 15-year-old. <laughs> yeah. Um, anything else? Um, uh, I, I guess huh? we... Yeah! Uh -huh. Right. Uh, when I came in first, I planted a lot. <coughs> but when I came at first, I planted a lot of fruit trees. Presently, uh, there's about probably about 50, 100 fruit trees on the side. Um, uh, they're different. Most of the survivors are mango trees, to be honest with you. Most of the provide, surviving fruit trees are mango trees. But um, within seven years, any cul-de-sac will have fruit trees all around it nice. within seven years. Because the moment people are living on that cul-de-sac, the likelihood of somebody coming and starting a bushfire is less likely. I will plant fruit, replant the fruit trees, and 
they the people living there they won't burn. Right. But what happens is people start bushfires when it's like this. Yeah. They call themselves hunters. Okay, I was gonna ask with that being said, is there like a uh, team in place, a group of uh, Africans in place already for security, to do security detail? Or like, it, or is there, or, or is that gonna be something we get in the future? I've got, I've, I've got people. Security. I've got people that are willing to do it. Yeah. But I no longer employ them. Yeah. Because I can't afford to. Yeah. We, we add security. Yeah. I had to let them all go. Yeah. Um, there's only so much, the little amount that I earn, yeah. there's only so much you can do. Yeah, police, fire, water, <laughs> hospital, yeah, it's hard. It's hard, I imagine. Yeah. So, um, um, we, that's why we got each other. Yeah. yeah. Um, right, one right. thing I didn't talk about. There are plots for housing. There's also allotments for the growing of your own oh. food stuff. And there, you'll notice there are three large areas of land in Ashkala that are meant for communal farming so that we grow certain staple crops together and then everybody has their own little piece of land where they can grow whatever they like. Right? If, if this, yes, you can take a look at